As we look at Hebrews chapter 12, there is an illustration of a race. I know that uh, I may look athletic to you, but I'm not. In fact, a friend of mine, he came into my office and he said, hey, I'm running a half marathon or a half uh, triathlon and I want you to participate. And I thought, um, well, maybe not this time. And he put it in such a way that he guilted me into it. And so there were three of us going to do the biking and the swimming and the running and we all chose one event and I, I thought about running. I don't like running. It hurts my knees. I don't want to be on a bike for 12 miles, so I'll swim. We can all swim, right? In fact, I thought, you know, fat floats, so I'm okay. And <laughs> so I began to train the night before. 400 meters can't be that hard. And so I got into a boat. I mean, excuse me, my friend was in a boat. And I swam the 400 meters. And, you know, it's not that hard when you're by yourself. But um, I, I don't think I was prepared, you know. So they got all the guys down together. And all these guys are ripping off their shirts. And I'm thinking, I don't want to rip off my shirt. I mean, they're all like six packs. And I'm thinking, oh, I got a two liter. <laughs> <laughs> and so... The gun goes off and we start going and I was not at all ready. I mean, I'm getting kicked in the face and my goggles are kind of flipping up and I'm, I'm trying to make it. And, and it, I should have known that something wasn't right because all of the lifeguards are like circling around me. <laughs> I mean, there, there, there's like 20 swimmers and they're only concerned about me. Will, you okay? I'm fine. Leave me alone. I got to concentrate. And I'm I'm swimming for all I have, and I'm, I'm like zigzagging because I'm oxygen deprived. I'm just trying to make it, and I can see the finish line. I can see it. It's, it's, it's only now about 50 feet away, but I, I mean, I, I just, my, my, I'm cramping up. I'm, I just feel like giving up. I really believe that there are people here who feel like giving up. Maybe it's some theological truth you just can't reconcile. Maybe it's just the deceitfulness of sin and we just found our heart with an appetite for sin and I don't know. Maybe it's a trial. Maybe something happened over Christmas break that rocked your world and you're like, I don't know if this Christian thing is worth it. Can I, can I just tell you that I understand? I, I've had enough circumstances where I found myself saying, is this even true? Is this just some sham? Is this something somebody made up and now we're brainwashed? Who's ever, who's ever had thoughts, is this, this true? And yet the presuppositions of the Christian is, is that there's a God. And God has revealed himself in Scripture. And therefore, we can finish the race. And in fact, the book of Hebrews was written in such a way with that theme in mind. The theme was this, that because of the faithfulness of God and because of the finished work of Christ, you can run the race. And so this illustration that's given in Hebrews chapter 12, he, he says, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. I, I don't want you to turn there. You, you don't have to, uh, uh, for time's sake, but I just want to give you a little bit of a background. In, in Hebrews chapter 1, it's there in verse 1 that we're told that God speaks. You see, there are many gods, but what sets the one true God apart from all the rest of the gods is that he's revealed himself. He forgoes his own privacy to reveal himself to sinners. God speaks. And he spoke at sundry times in various manners at various times. And he saved the best revelation of himself for last. And the best revelation from God is Jesus Christ. 
And what Hebrews does is shows us that Jesus Christ is better than the angels. Jesus is better than the prophets. Jesus is better than the Old Testament priestly system. Jesus is better. And you can run the race because the faithfulness of God and because of the finished work of Christ. In fact, that's the presupposition that I'm going to mount every other thing we say in chapel this week on. God speaks and he keeps his promises. And Jesus Christ is sufficient in the work that he's done because of the faithfulness of God and the finished work of Jesus Christ. You can run this race. Christian, do you understand that you're in a race of faith? Do you understand when he says, let us run the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith? Do you understand that the just shall live by faith? That this has always been about faith? That what we read up there in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, grace through faith alone, that our justification was a belief that there's a God who's revealed himself through Jesus and that Jesus Christ is sufficient for our sin. He died, he was buried, he rose again. Do you understand that your, faith, your, your race began with faith? But your race will culminate with faith. April 2nd, 922, phone call. Will, your dad, he's in the hospital. Don't know if he's going to make it. Vex the next hour, gathering up kids. Should we, should we jet up over to Idaho to try to get there before he passes away? Should we... Um, Finally, we said yes, so we jump in the van, we load everyone up, we start driving, 1022 text comes, he didn't make it. Faith. Faith. It's not just that it began with faith, but it culminates with faith. Aren't you glad there's somewhere better than Clearwater, Florida? Aren't you glad that heaven is real? That God is real? But do you understand that this race right now is a faith for me to appropriate my position in Christ, for me to take those truths that there's a God who's revealed himself, that there's a place where I can enjoy God for all of eternity, that will, that will have a bearing on my choices right now. The faith that I had, the faith that I will have, is a faith that I need right now. And what we see in this passage of Scripture is, Christian, you are in this race of faith, but it's not against other runners because he, he tells us it's actually a race to the end. It's actually a race for us to finish. It's, it's not that I'm looking at one of you saying I'm better or, or oh, I'm not as good as that person. It's, it's, it's not a race against others. It's really a, a race to the end. And what Hebrews does is it puts these tensions in our life that by faith we, 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 we are complete in Christ, but then by faith were to compete and complete the race to finish it. And so there's these tensions, this grace and obedience te tensions that, that by faith God will give me the grace to run, but by faith I need to run. And there's the preservation and perseverance that just begins to pull on either direction because there can be abuses in that, can't there? In fact, how, how many of you have ever met somebody that believed that they could lo lose their salvation, and so since it was based on their behavior, they were always up and down? How many of you have ever known somebody like that? My dad was like that. He, uh, he grew up in a, in a true Arminian background that taught him that he could lose his salvation. And so my dad, he'd just be so fearful. Uh, did, he, did he sin too much? I mean, you ever thought about that? What, what sin would be too much? At what point is, are, are you now culpable for that sin and, and the insecurity that was going on in his life? And he just was so fearful, but I'm so thankful that about a year and a half ago, I'm on the phone and he said this. He said, you know, Will, I've just come to grips with the fact that, that my right standing with God is not based on my position, excuse me, not based on my performance, but it's based on Jesus Christ alone. And so could there be some folks here that you need to be assured of what it is to be in Christ? But how many of you have ever known somebody that they said something to the equivalent of, I, I prayed the prayer, or, I, I, you know, I'm a Christian, you know, I can't lose my salvation, and they just, it, it was like their whole life was like, uh, like seriously into sin, and there was no regard for their soul. How many of you have known somebody like that before? 
And so on either side of this equation, we begin to realize that this race of faith, because of the finished work of God, and, and, and excuse me, the, 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 the faithfulness of God and the finished work of Christ, that we can run this race. That God gives us a little bit of salt and he gives us a little bit of pepper. You see, some of us need a little bit of salt this morning. Some of us are discouraged. Some of us are thinking, you know what, I, I, I can't believe I said that, what I did. I, I can't believe I went there. I just can't believe I went there. And you're, you're just, you're so bothered in your heart. You need to be reminded of, of the, the preserving agent of God's grace. But there's some of us that need a little bit of pepper, don't we? There's some of us that have gotten a little bit spiritually lazy. We need a little boot in the backside. So let's do a little informal survey. How many of you would say, Will, I, in my Christian race, I need to be reminded that God's going to keep me. I'm, just, I'm low right now, and I just need to be reminded God's going to keep me. Who says, Will, I need a little bit more of God's salt? Would you raise your hand? Who needs more salt this morning? Would you raise your hand? Just put it up, all right? How many need a little pepper? Who needs pepper? All right. How many need both? God's going to keep us. But his grace is not to be wasted. It's to spill out into us running this race of faith. And so by faith we can run and by faith we can rest. And God's the one that's going to keep us and God's the one that's going to enable us and God's the one that's going to help us. But we must obey. Christian, you are in a race of faith. But Christian, others have run this race. You know what he did? He said, wherefore, seeing we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. These witnesses are in the previous chapter, and in chapter 11, we see 19 specific witnesses. We see 22 different hardships that were conquered, and by faith, Enoch sought God. This challenge that Dr. Clem is giving to us for this next semester, do you know that by faith, you can pursue God? By faith, Noah, he, he heard the warnings of God. By faith, Abraham heard the voice of God. By faith, Moses said no to the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. You see, Christian, others have run this race, but Christian, there are hindrances to this race of faith. He says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. You know, the weights, they're things that are not necessarily sinful in and of themselves. They're not things that, that maybe they don't have a law against them. It's just there's things that could rob our heart. In fact, we all know things like that. How many of you can think of an item in your life that's not necessarily sinful in and of itself, but it can rob you of your joy in Christ? And I know, I know things like that. I know things in my own heart. There, it's like 1 Corinthians 6. It's not things that are sinful, but are things that are not expedient to run the race. In the context of Hebrews, there were some folks that were saying, we, we like some of those old rituals, and we're going to go back to some of those rituals, but, but those rituals had nothing to do with saving grace, but if they weren't careful, they could begin to say that they did. And so the weights that does so easily beset us, what are your weights? I think right now in this era... I look back with great joy of the time that I went to college. Because I was, as I was at a Christian college, it was there that God began to really work in my heart through some godly staff members. And there were a couple seniors that began to really love on me. And you know what God began to do? He began to really help me to say, you know what, I want to pursue God, not because I'm supposed to, because... I really want to love him. I really want to love him. And so I began to understand that much of that which is sin in my life, it's not just that I need to avoid it just so that I avoid it in my own strength, but it's actually that that sin begins to rob me of my ability to enjoy Christ. I am made to worship one. I am made to enjoy one over all else. And anything else can truly begin to sit, slip into my life and cause me to lose my love for Christ. He said the weights, but he said the sin that does so easily beset us. And the sin that he's talking about is unbelief. In fact, that's the dots that I want to connect this morning. That's what I really want us to walk away with. Uh, it really, the, the one statement that because of the faithfulness of God and the finished work of Christ, I can run. But if there's another concept that you'd walk away with, it's this. It's that every time I choose to sin, at the core is unbelief. Every time I choose to sin, at the core is unbelief. 
In Hebrews, in chapter 3, he says this, Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. He says, so that we could not enter in because of unbelief. He says this, they, they do not go because they, even though it's first preached, they enter not because of unbelief. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man after the same example of unbelief fall away. The besetting sin of Hebrews is the sin of unbelief. You see, when uh, I'm captured by the sin of unbelief, I stop seeking God because I don't believe he lives. Enoch, Hebrews 11, verse 5. When I am captured by the sin of unbelief, I stop heeding God's warnings because I don't believe he'll do what he says. Hebrews 11, verse 7, Noah. When I am captured by the sin of unbelief, I stop obeying God's commands because I don't think God knows what's best for me in the future. That's Abraham. Uh, Moses, he, 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 when I stop identifying with God's people, I, I don't believe that God can take care of me when I'm all alone. When I'm captured by the sin of unbelief, I stop saying no to the pleasures of this world because I don't believe that God can satisfy. When, when I am captured by unbelief, I stop saying no to materialism because I don't believe that God can ultimately give me joy. Do you understand that every one of our sins is, the, is, is it found in unbelief? belief and my concern is this my concern is how many of us fall away and for some it starts with some theological thing we can't understand and some of us it's because of a trial but many of us fall away because of little choices of unbelief. Little choices of not believing God will satisfy. Little choices that manifest itself in us falling away. Christian, you are in a race of faith. Christian others have run this race. Christian, there are things that can slow you down in this race. But Christian, this race of faith is demanding. He says, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. It, it's, a, it's a command. Let us run this race. It's agon. It's, it's later on we'll get an English word, word called agony. It, it is a grinding trial. It's not easy, this life. Many of us, we think that life should be so easy and people should take care of all my problems and if and if this christian thing is hard then i don't want it can i tell you something the christian race has difficulties to it and it's a race of faith he says endurance it's not a sprint and i don't even think it's a marathon because we live in the United States of entertainment. And so when we think of marathon, I think most of us think Olympics. And we think of, uh, we think of this dude who's like got zero body fat. And he's got this cute little tank top and shorts and nice little number. And, and the gun goes off and he starts running. And, and he's running and, and it takes three hours and that's too long for us. And so they, they fade over to like the decathlon over here and they go over to swimming events. And, and then they come back and he's still, and he's always smiling and he's just running and and he's just making it. And then, and then if it's too long, they even like sub in like uh, some little like, like story about his life. He was from the state of Michigan. He has a 4.0. You know, it goes through this whole thing. And oh, that's a cool story. And then he crosses the finish line and they slap, you know, Gatorade. And he, he rehydrates. And he's kind of got this. And he's kind of just, just enough of it's coming out of his lips to look cool. No, it's not even like a marathon. It's like... Uh, it's like Louis Zampernini. He was, he was the one that was supposed to break the four-minute mile. He was uh, 1940, uh, uh, excuse me, 1936 Olympics in Berlin, and he didn't get to run his event but he, uh, because he had an injury, but then somebody else got injured after he got better, and so he subbed in for a relay, and he, and he, just, he, he just did an awesome run, but, but, but he, he thought, I'm going to go to the 1940 Olympics in Tokyo, but... Uh, those of you that uh, have at least read your history books know that there was a war during that time. 
So rather than running in Tokyo, he's now in a bomber over the Pacific and his plane breaks down and he crashes into the ocean and he and two other men make it in their boat and uh, it's this grinding trial, right? It's a, if, if only I can get out of this boat and now they're in the Pacific for 47 days with limited, uh, limited water and hardly any food. In fact, they grab an albatross and and they're able to eat it raw, and they take some, some bones, and they catch a fish. And I mean, it's this extraordinary story of this enduring, uh, grueling. And, and, and you think that they would, if we can just get to an island, right? If somebody can just rescue us 47 days, I mean, that just seems forever, but, but for us, 47 days, I mean, we only got 106 days of school, let, let alone 47 days in a boat, and finally they're rescued, but they're rescued by the bad guys, and now they're in a prisoner of war camp, and they find out that Louis Zamperini was this Olympian runner, and so they want him to break. I mean, they, they want to use him as a propaganda tool, and so if now, if only he can, um, you know, if he can just get through this prisoner of war camp, right? Well, finally, he's transported to, uh, from Philippines, he's transported to Japan, and then from Japan, you know, that, that finally he's rescued, so, so it's all over, right? No, now he goes back home, and because of all the demons of what happened in this prison of war camp, he's a drunk now, and he's, he, he gets married, and he's abusing his wife, and all the trials, but then he walks into a tent, and there's an evangelist preaching, and Louis Zampernini gets saved. You think his race is over, Right? No, he's still alive today. He's still running his race. Hey, hey, look up here just for a second. There's some of you that have some real hardships, and you feel like giving up. Can I tell you something? You got to keep running. If you're in Christ, you've got to keep running. It's not just getting through a semester. It's not finally getting a spouse. It's not finally getting a job. It's not just having kids. It's not retiring. Look at me. It's about making it safely home to be with God. That's why my heart aches, because there's some of you, you've heard all this, and yet you know you're not in Christ. You will not make it safely home if Christ is not in you. And Christ is not appropriated by some word said. It's the miraculous work of God to those who turn from sin and in faith trust in Jesus Christ alone. But Christian, just because... Christ is in you mean, does not mean you just sit on the sideline and just waste your life. No, you take that faith that saved you, and by faith you run, but you run a race that's hard, and you run a race that requires endurance, and it's a race that's been set before you. God has chosen your race. God knows your trials. God knows your hardships. God knows your circumstance. And yet that loving Father is working in your life that which is required for you to make it safely home. And let me just conclude this way. This race that God's called you to run is not something that you just need to try hard. It's not something that I just, I just exhort you and then you all go, okay, I work hard. I'm going to run. I'm going to run. I'm going to run. No, he said it so beautifully. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus is the pioneer. Jesus is the one that's gone before us. Oh, he's the best example. Fitting in the theme of, of Hebrews, Jesus is better than all the examples of Hebrews chapter 11. But the reason why Jesus is better is because through the Spirit of God, Jesus lives in you you he enables us to run this race he's the author he's the finisher who for the joy that is set before him you know jesus christ he did come to this earth he ran this race that he's called us to run and you know what jesus did when the hardships of, of the garden of gethsemane and the nails and the scourging and the whip and the mockery he said i don't care about those things because i'm dying so that all of these can make it safely home. And you know what? 
it says a phrase that he sat down on the right hand of God. If we would have had the time, we would have taken Hebrews from about chapter 4 to chapter 10 and would have talked about the priestly system and would have talked about how the high priest was elected among the, from the, among the other priests and how that he attended to his duties on the Day of Atonement specifically and there was a sacrifice for his sin and then two lambs for all of Israel and then another a, a goat that was, I mean a lamb for all of Israel and then two goats that were, were, had other rites done to it and, and this high priest was scurrying around that the high priest in the Holy of Holies would never stopped moving. It was attending to the duty, duties because guess what? High priests, they come and go. High priests die because they're human. But can I tell you something? Jesus Christ was the high priest and he was the lamb. And so when Jesus Christ died, he atoned for our sins and he sat down for it's finished. Because, because of the faithfulness of God and the finished work of Jesus Christ, you can run the race. Let's bow our heads together. My heart is connected to these next four days. I will spend intentional time praying. And so can you just communicate what's going on so I can know how to best spend these four days. With their heads bowed, who'd say, Will, I do know Christ. I really do know Christ. Christ is in me. It's not, it's not just words said, but there, there was true, a true work of God done in my heart. If that's you, would you raise your hand and say, Will, Christ is in me. You put your hands down. Who'd say, Will, I don't know if Christ is in me, and I would appreciate your prayer. I would appreciate that. Would you lift your hand? Just, I, I'm not going to call you out, but I am going to pray. God does a work. I appreciate it. I see some hands. Who else? Well, I don't know if Christ is in me. I'd like you to pray for me. Just put it up long enough for me to see. I do see some hands. I want, I, I'm intentionally going to pray for you this week. Are there others? Okay. I re, oh, wow. I, I appreciate the honesty. My heart is, is connected right here because this, I, I just appreciate you trusting me and I'm going to be faithful with that. Are there others? I'm making a commitment to pray for you. Who'd say, Will, I know I'm in Christ, but right now the race is hard, and to be straight up, I'm faltering. Would you just lift your hand and say, Will, that's what's going on. I, I, the race right now is hard, and I'm faltering. I'm really faltering. Okay, a lot of us. Let's pray together. Father, we just give you these chapel days, and Lord, we just ask already what Dr. Clem already presented, that Lord, this would be a word-filled, gospel-centered semester that there would just be spontaneous prayers from students of a hunger for you. Would we all just love you a little bit more? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.